Hi, it's Gadget UK here again. Uh, this time I'm looking at my latest pickup here, um, a 1541 Ultimate. So I mentioned these recently on my uh, C64 News video. Um, I think he's still got some of these in stock. If you're quick, if you hurry, you might get one of the last ones he's got. So it's a bit dirt just gone into there actually. Um, yeah, I think he said he had about 80 of these left as of about uh, a week ago. So you might be lucky and you might find he's got one still in stock. Um, if not, uh, you probably have to wait three or four months, I would think, for the next batch. Uh, it might be sooner than that, I don't know. I do know that the last lot he uh, made in, started making in February and it's took until now to get those completed and stuff, you know, get all the boards ordered and all the rest of it. Um, but these are made by Gideon. Um, I'll post some links down below. Um, I think he's a nice uh, German guy. Um, and he's done a fantastic job on these. I think the cases are probably printed. I'll just take that off there. Um, yeah, I think they're probably uh, 3D printed or something. I don't know. It's just got that sort of appearance to it. Um, they may well be uh, moulded. But uh, yeah, anyway, um, this provides um, you've got a little micro SD card there. So if I can just get that out. It's not the easiest thing to get out actually, because the way the hole is recess, you know, it recesses. And once you push the card in, you've got to put something fine into there to get it out but uh, yeah micro SD uh, I've got a 16 gig there 16 gig card um, put all my disc images and tape images car images and things on there um, this does all supports all three uh, tape cart and disc um, and it's a 15 uh, primarily it's 1541 um, disc drive emulator um, and what sort of puts this um, above something like the SD to IEC is the compatibility you know the, the level of accuracy in terms of emulation there that he's actually managed to implement uh, using the FPGAs and things on there um, it's very very if not you know very very accurate if not 100% accurate um, I would yeah I would say it's 100% accurate because there are no known issues with this as far as I can gather pretty much any D64 you, image you throw at it it will support you know regardless of the protection and all the rest of it um, um, it will do G is it G64 images as well like just raw disk dumps and things you know um, those all work fine on this as well um, but it does more than just you know emulate a disk drive here um, and just coming back to the disk drive thing I'll just show you you've got this uh, you know a serial port there on the side and you get a cable with it I didn't know you got the cable with it I actually ordered a separate one but uh, I was super pleasantly surprised when it arrived I actually had a serial cable and obviously this plugs into the back of your car slot on your C64 and then you connect your serial port up um, and you're away really um, and like I say that it emulates their um, you know 64 uh, disc images um, but you've also got um, other functionality built in here you've got three buttons here you've got um, a reset button on the right the middle button brings up your menu so that does like a, a non-maskable interrupt type thing where it freezes the C64 doing whatever it's doing and just pops up a little menu where you can actually navigate the SD card and look at the settings and things the device and various other things um, and I think if you press it uh, if you press, I think you've got to press. Um, can't be you pressed then to get out. I think you press the button a second time, you go back to wherever you were at. Uh, but this first button can be used with some of the um, debug type functionality you get built into carts, where you can freeze it, you can look at the memory, you know, um, go through the memory, change various values in memory and stuff, you know, pokes and peaks and all that sort of stuff. Uh, I forgot what they call it. Um, I haven't really played around with that very much, but yeah, you can use that to basically debug apps and things. And, modify code and stuff in real time um, I guess that's quite cool certainly for developers that would be quite cool so the other thing this features as well as the SD card support you've got a USB port so you can stick a USB um, a USB uh, hard disk or USB uh, memory stick or something um, and use that instead of the micro SD or as well as I think you can use the two together um, so there's tons of options there you also have this three and a half uh, mil stereo audio jack here um, so you plug you know some speakers or something in there and you can actually this actually emulates the sound as well so as it's reading discs and things and seek and you get the read and seek sounds and things coming out of that jack but in addition to that you can configure this um, I think there's an option called the ultimate sound uh, module or something you can enable that in here um, and get an additional SID uh, mapped into your system you know you can specify the, the base address or whatever it says um, and have two SIDs in your system you know your, your heart your SID that's physically on your board and the SID that's up on here um, 
I might come back to this in a future video and consider doing some sort of mod because I'd, what I'd like to be able to do is take the output of this and merge it with my um, the, the, the audio coming out of the C64 there um, and feed that to my TV so that I've got the I can hear the whole lot effectively you know both SIDs and the the disc loading sounds and things as well so I'll probably do that in a later video I think. Um, it also supports carts. I mean, you know, it stands to reason it's a cart anyway. But you can um, use the menu there, select a CRT image, and uh, it'll just boost right up instantly. You know, you're straight into a cart, whatever cart you're in. You can press the reset, and the cart resets, um, which is quite cool. So you know, you know, it's an ideal cart solution as well. Not necessarily, just, you wouldn't just necessarily want one of these just for the disk drive stuff. It's brilliant if you just want to mess around with cart stuff as well. So the other thing you've got here is this nice uh, tape adapter. Uh, as you can see, it just plugs into the pin header underneath here, um, I'll show you, just goes like that um, and you plug that into your C64 tape port um, and then you can press the NMI button, um, load up a .tap file um, and it will output um, from through the FPGA there, um, you know the, uh, I don't know, it's, it's not audio per se, it's, it's like, um, you know, it's digital, you get a digital signal because that's what comes out of the normal tape port, um, straight to, <clears throat> into your tape interface there. So things like ocean loaders and things, you know, we've got music on the loading screens and things. If you want to, you know, have those ac you know accessible to you through this, this is ex that's exactly what you can do. Um, I think this cable's like an extra 20 something euros or something, but it's well worth getting. Um, it'd be silly really to invest in one of these and not get that additional tape interface cable. So I'll connect all this up now. I'll just run through some of the things and I'll just show you it working. So there you go, you can see we're switched on here, we've got the carts plugged in, serial cable going into the serial port here, tape port connected, uh, and that's it, and I'll show you the screen. So this is the way it's configured to start with, you, you come up with this blue screen when you first switch it on. Um, you've got a few different options there, you've got F1 configured memory. I'm not really sure how that's used, you know, if you press F1 it doesn't seem to do anything, I don't know if it's just giving you additional memory or what, so I'll just switch it back off and on again. Um, then you've got a reset option F3. Utilities, which need to be disk utilities, you know, if you want to, looks like copying and formatting disks and things uh, by the looks of things. Uh, how do you get out of that now? Uh, you can only connect it to fast load and switch it off and on again. Um, and you've got F F7 to install fast load. So if I do that, you just get this uh, fast loader, Cyberpunk's retro replay. Um, now, if I press the NMI button, um, the middle button, this is your menu, so normally if you've got USB connected, you'll see USB drive here as well as the SD card. And you just use the cursor keys, like I think right goes into the, the thing you've got highlighted. I've changed the default colours here to have yellow for something I've not selected and green for something I have selected. Um, I think default's like black and white or something that's white and grey. Um, but as you can see, you just navigate your, you know, your file system here. Let's just try to load a cart, go to ROMs, cartridges, uh, let's load Jack Attack, that's a good one. Uh, so you just find your file, uh, jack attack, and you'll see as you sort of press right on it or press return, you'll get options, you know, once it re recognises the file type there, you know, it gives you various options. So I can just run that car, and there you go, it's instantly loaded, uh, and I can press the reset button on the car, and that car is just reset as normal, you reset as many times as you want, which is sweet, so that's that. So if we go into NMI again, there we go, get the menu up, press F2 which is shift and F1 and then you get the settings up so you'll see you've got an onboard clock so I can have a look at that, uh, I've got an 8 get out of this now, I think you've got to press shift F8, F8 that's it, yeah F8, uh, let's go back into F2 again, USB settings so that's for your USB port, uh, it's annoying I'm not sure how to keep, you've got to keep going back around actually to get back into the settings again, um, audio output settings so you can choose which, on the 3.5mm jack there, which drive and stuff goes to which channel. So you could have, it will emulate two drives. This You could have drive A and drive B going to different channels there. That's quite cool. Uh, settings again, have to shift F1. Uh, software, IEC settings, I'm not going to go into that, or that. Ultimate command interface, C64 and cartridge settings, we'll have a look at that. Um, so you can see the cartridge we've got selected there is the default cartridge that comes up when you boot it. So you can actually go through these, um, I'll just go back to that, just going to this retro replay, that's it. So you've got Super Snapshot, Samsung Action Replay, Retro Replay, these are all built in. Super Snapshot 5.22 NTSC, these are NTSC ones, Epic's Fast Loader, 
custom 8k ROM, 16k ROM. So you've got various options there. There's quite a few actually. It's amazing how many options there are. I'm trying to find the car I have there. It was that one, wasn't it? Retro replay. Um, so you can specify your custom car file there, whether it's, you know, let's say that ties in with the top first option, whether it's custom 6K or 8K or whatever, uh, like 6K, 8K or 16K or whatever. Um, you can have an alternate kernel file. Um, so I've got that disabled. I did experiment. You can have, I did enable Jiffy Dust there. That, that works okay, I think. Um, I could try that now, actually, if I just shift F8 out of that, switch it off and on. See at the top there it says Jiffy Dos. So if that's how you do that, uh, let's load it back up again. Shift F2. I'll switch that off actually before I forget. Disabled though, yeah. RAM expansion unit, so this is you know the REU stuff, you can uh, give it a load of additional RAM. Um, I think this will go up to about 16 meg, which is ridiculous. But you can use that with like Geos, um, and there are some videos some like um, Good video codecs and things available for this. You can download like a video player and load files into your REU uh, memory and play those videos from there. That's quite cool. I've not done anything with that yet. I probably will do it at some point in the future, I think. Um, and that's where you map your um, additional audio, you know, your additional SID, SID. So if I enable that, we'll have an additional SID at DF20 to DFFF, which is quite cool. So you can play, uh, you know, dual SID music and stuff. Um, DMA load. Mimix ID, I'm not sure what that is. Uh, button order, okay, so you can change the order of the buttons as well, that's quite cool. And a few of the settings there. Um, let's just come out of that. Shift F8, Shift F1, well, F2, there we go. Um, what else have we got? Uh, user interface settings, that's just like, you know, the general appearance, that's where I change the colour of the text and stuff for the menus and things here. Um, and then you've got separate disk drive settings for drive A and drive B. So if we go into there, you'll see it's quite configurable. You can do a lot. You can enable or disable the drive. You can change its, its bus ID. So you could probably link this up to another physical drive and have a physical drive as well as the virtual drive. That's in theory possible. I don't see why that wouldn't work. Um, you can also select the ROM. So uh, I forgot there, 15412 is the default one, but you've got uh, various, all the different models really. As you can see, you can load your own from the file as well. So. Um, I'll leave it on that for the moment. Uh, yeah, that's where you can specify a specific ROM file for your own custom ROM. Um, I guess that's useful because you could actually load the Jiffy DOS ROMs, I think. I don't know why you would need that, but you know, my understanding is with 1541 drives, you can get a ROM to swap, you know, a Jiffy DOS ROM to swap out actually on the drives themselves, so you can do that on here. Um, you can enable additional RAM on the board as well on the actual drive board, virtual drive board. Um, disk swap delay, you can change that. Uh, reset when C6, uh, yeah, 1541 resets when the C64 resets, yeah, that's quite cool. I don't know why you wouldn't want that on, but there might be instances where you might want to separate the two. Um, yeah, and a couple of other options there, I'm not sure about. So let's just come out of there. I think we've done all the options in there, aren't we? Yeah, so you can do the same thing for drive B. So if you just load a disk now, go to the fast loader, uh, go to the menu, navigate the car, let's find it C64, uh, sorry, D64 disk, uh, let's load Operation Wolf O. Um, as you can see, you just press the letter and you go straight to that folder. Uh, so if I type OPER, you can see it just jumps straight down towards the begin with OPER. Uh, there's Operation Wolf, return. And you've got different options here. Um, if you run a disk, it'll reboot the um, C64 and then just load that disk. So you end up with no fast loader because it's not selected the fast loader there that you would normally do from the cart once you first boot it. If you choose to mount a disk, the, it's sat there now ready. It's actually mounted that disk in the virtual drive. And then you can, the shortcut, you can press F1, which is press return, um, and you make use of the fast loader there. And it's very, 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 very quick. Um, all these fast loaders are much the same, really. It's just as fast as uh, Epic's fast load or Jiffy DOS. They're all uh, they all work the same way. Um, on a similar on the same on that point, actually, the very point about fast loaders. Um, check out down below. I'll put a link to Stig's uh, Stig's World's channel again. Uh, he recently did a video on uh, Jiffy DOS, so you can have a look at that. 
if you're interested in fast loaders and stuff and other alternatives to using you know epics fast load or you know one of the loaders built to one of these carts etc so let's just press space that's decompressing I think let's just give that a second No, 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 we don't want to cheat. As you can see, that's just like instant, you know, really quick loading. It's uh, fantastic, really fantastic. So as you can see, that's loading fine there. Um, got a load of music going on. It's quite cool. It's a nice feature um, You can see the mod I've done here with this jumper um, and it actually relates to this game uh, and some of the other ocean loader games um, What you can see there is I've got from the right hand pin where that resistor is connected to that's ground um, and the le far left hand pin over here is the um, Sense pin I think so the C64 can determine when you are pressing buttons on the cassette deck um, now it can't tell which button you're pressing, it's just whether you're pressing a button like play for example. Um, now this game, um, and the other ocean loader games, they load okay, but right up to the end and then it just doesn't load. At the very end of the game it'll just fail to load. Um, and I think it's a protection mechanism, I think that's what's going on. I think they're sensing that the tape, you're not pressing play on your cassette deck and uh, you know it's, it's a deliberate protection uh, you know, attempt that's stopping you from play in the game because I guess you could dump it to disc or something you know um, load it from disc and then it wouldn't work that's the I think that's the idea because your tape wouldn't be you know it wouldn't be able to sense that your tapes playing so I've just got a jumper there where I can just permanently um, pull that pin low um, so it's simulating pressing play now the other way you can do this if you don't want to do a mod like this yourself is you can connect your tape deck up in parallel um, that's the way this adapter works it allows you to do that anyway and there's a couple of jumpers here to allow pass through of the you know the signals from here to your C64 um, so I think the way it works the bottom jumper there's got to be set on I think that's for power actually I think that's whether it pulls power from this tape or so I have that I have that set to uh, on and then this other jumper up here is to do with the read, the read pass through and I've got that open at the moment so data doesn't pass through here but I think the control pin does so if you've got your tape deck connected now when you were pressing play on your tape deck this game would load that would be the same as what I'm doing here this is trying to simulate a tape deck play button being pressed effectively that's it so if we just let that run to the end there um, I'll just edit this and just show you once it's actually finished loading all of the tapes and things will load without an issue but I think it's like I say, you know, you can see that's loaded now. If I'd not had that jumper on there, that wouldn't have loaded. You just like have some lines and things at the end there. So I do think it's a protection-based thing. Um, anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.